All right, I think we can start now, Dr. Charlton. Is it okay? All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, all right, so first of all, I'm Katrin. I will be assisting all the Philippines account in terms of sales matter, mar marketing, and any support needed. All right, so I have here with me uh, Mr. Hari Hara. Hari Hara Sudan uh, is currently an application engineer for CAD IT consultant and then part of the technical team that support customer in various discipline uh, domains. All right, so he completed his Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering at National University of Singapore with his uh, cost work focus on design and manufacturing. He is uh, specialized in FEA simulations such as linear and nonlinear dynamic, uh, dynamic heat transfer and advanced coupled field simulation like uh, biroacoustic, piezoelectric, etc. He is uh, he is experienced in explicit dynamics uh, analysis for solving highly nonlinear dynamic problems, okay? Such as uh, drop test, crash, hypervelocity, impact, uh, blast structure interaction. Uh, he is also providing uh, engineering simulation consulting service and post sale technical support for ANSYS Mechanical Aqua, Autodyne, and then uh, Granta products. All right, so I think, uh, Hardy, you can show your screen if you have uh, a, a, your presentation. Sorry. Hi, Catherine. Thanks. Thanks Hi. for the introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi guys, thanks for uh, joining this session. So um, I think uh, in this session, I'm going to uh, go through uh, ANSYS Mechanical. So let me uh, share my screen first. I hope you all can uh, see my screen. Uh, yes, Harry, I can see your screen. Okay, sure. Now you can see, right? So, uh, yeah. So I believe you all can see my uh, presentation. So uh, in this session, I'm going to go through uh, ANSYS Mechanical. It's like a overview presentation of ANSYS Mechanical capabilities. So um, ANSYS Mechanical is the FEA solver in under ANSYS uh, solutions. Okay, so this uh, <coughs> presentation covers the the full capabilities of ANSYS Mechanical. So which includes uh, normal basic dynamic uh, sorry basic static type of analysis and also dynamic analysis, which includes uh, various types of vibration uh, analysis capabilities. And other than this, we also have some specialized uh, uh, simulations for uh, some uh, specific applications. So I will give uh, an overview of all these uh, different types of applications that can be solved using ANSYS Mechanical. So first, uh, why uh, do we need to simulate? Okay, so I believe uh, you all are familiar with um, the product design process, right? So we uh, engineers will design the product and then they have to make sure the product works fine uh for a specific period of time okay so uh, simulation helps us to design products and to check whether the product can meet the the design standards or the the, the product expected standards okay and also it helps to meet the uh, product code regulation so this is also kind of standards okay. then improve product design so let's say we already have a product and then we want we we'd like to uh, to improve its performance or reliability. I will say there is a warranty issue or something. Okay, so then we need to improve the design. Right? So again, uh, simulation helps us to, uh, to to improve the performance of the product. Then root cause failure analysis. So let's say there is an existing product that fails uh, during the operation. So it can be due to many different reasons. So simulations, simulation tools can help to find out if there is any structural or or some physics related issue with the with the with the design itself so if you you are using simulation you can find out the root cause 
the design problem and then you can also rectify the problems and finally I reduce time and cost of product de development <laughs> so without simulation uh, in order for companies to design a product and then bring it into market it takes a lot of time because they have to do a preliminary design then they have to, to do a prototype and then uh, they have to to check the design like we applying the load so the product the prototype must undergo some testing process so all these are time consuming and uh, costly okay? but simulation will reduce this whole process so using computers we can quickly uh, run the simulation and check whether the design is able to meet the specific standard or not and also it helps us to reduce the number of prototypes so in, in, instead of doing maybe 10 or 15 prototypes with simulation we can just uh, do one or two prototypes and then uh, we can go with the product uh, you know, um, launching or something so this will shorten the product design cycle And other than the, the advantages I've discussed before, with simulation, you can also innovate. So uh, simulation, you can write a lot of new ideas because all these are not cost effect. I mean, it, that doesn't incur any cost. So you can quickly run your multiple designs using you know, simulation. So that helps in driving innovation in the product design and then manage complexity so sometimes we might be dealing with some complex parts so uh, understanding the physics or maybe uh, checking its performance without a prototype can be difficult whereas simulation uh, with simulation you can even manage complex physics okay. and uh, yeah, reduce cost lower cycle time so all this we discussed uh, earlier and why ANSYS okay so ANSYS uh, I most of you um, have come across ANSYS before. So ANSYS is the world leading simulation software. Uh, so ANSYS provides multi-physics simulation solutions. Okay. So ANSYS is uh, concentrating only on uh, mechanical type of simulation. So ANSYS provides multi-physics simulation platform. Okay. So with ANSYS, you can uh, understand the, the performance in terms of structural physics or uh, in terms of uh, fluids or electronics. So you can look at multiple or various different factors okay, and aspects as well. Then we have a uh, uh, best in class solver, which is robust. And then we have a reliable workflow, uh, seamless data connectivity, like you can connect and share information from multiple systems. And then uh, simulation, so we, as mentioned, we have the best solvers that you know, with, with this, you can uh, scale up your simulation you can increase your model size at the same time you can also reduce your solving time okay. so these are the, the five, five priorities of ANSYS customers and ANSYS is trying to uh, ANSYS has developed tools to to match their customers requirements like accuracy multi-physics uh, recently electrification So these are some of the world-class companies using ANSYS. So uh, almost all uh, the the the, uh, the big companies in the, in the manufacturing or design product development design sector will be using ANSYS, like uh, U.S. Army, ABB, uh, NVIDIA in electronics. Uh, in automotive, we have uh, BMW, uh, Daimler. And then energy sector, we have Petronas, Petrobar, Petrobras, Petronas, Vestas. Okay. And in consumer goods, goods we have Nestle, PNG. In medical, uh, we have Pfizer, Philips. So almost in all the industries, uh, we have customers uh, raising answers for to improve their product performance. So uh, mechanical product family. So I, uh, under mechanical, we have a uh, uh, different range of products. Okay. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, ANSYS is providing multi-physics simulation solutions. So ANSYS uh, is not only structural simulation, which is mechanical. We also have fluid dynamic simulations, electromagnetic simulations, semiconductor, 
uh, embedded software uh, optical so and also of materials information so we have like multi physics solutions okay. so now in this presentation we are going to concentrate on the structural portion So these are the different tools under or different products under ANSYS Mechanical family. First is ANSYS Mechanical. So ANSYS Mechanical is mainly used for stress analysis or strength analysis. So we today we are going to uh, to go through the the mechanical ANSYS Mechanical in detail. Okay. Then we have ANSYS LS Dyna, which is also a structural analysis tool, but for some specialized applications like drop test, crushed, crash test, impact test. Okay. Then Autodyne is uh, also another structural analysis tool, but Autodyne is mainly used for blast simulation and blast structure interaction. Okay. So blast and blast structure interaction. Then we have additive solutions. So ANSYS additive solutions are mainly used to simulate 3D printing process. Okay. So later uh, in in the coming presentation, I will quickly show a slide on these additive solutions. Then we have some add-on tools like Encode. Encode is an add-on tool for fatigue calculations, and Axis Motion is an add-on tool for um, multi-body dynamic analysis. Then Sherlock is a tool for uh, like PCB reliability study. So today we are going to concentrate mainly on mechanical and also we'll touch all these tools. So access mechanical, uh, this is the GUI of access mechanical. So uh, the main advantage of using access is that access provides uh, the most user-friendly interface with a lot of automations. Okay. So uh, as you can see, this is the GUI of access mechanical. So this is a uh, more user-friendly GUI. So we have uh, like integrated platforms, so multi, multi, multiple components are already integrated. So you, 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 we have a seamless data transfer. It's easy to use on multi-purpose tools we have here. So before uh, we go into mechanical, first uh, let me uh, explain to you about ANSYS Workbench. Okay. So ANSYS Workbench uh, is a platform. So ANSYS Workbench is a simulation platform of ANSYS that uh, allows you to access all the different solvers within ANSYS. Okay. So as mentioned before, we have multi-physics simulation solutions, right? So this Workbench platform will allow you to access the different comp the different physics solutions like uh, structural analysis. So structural analysis is under static structure. Then if you like to do flow fluid flow analysis, we have fluent system. So we have a lot of uh, workflows, predefined workflows for different types of analysis in the Workbench platform. So Workbench is not a software by itself, but it is a platform that allows you to access the, the various different solutions that we have. Okay. So the Workbench platform also allows you to do multi-physics simulation or couple physics simulation. Okay. Uh, for example, if you want to do a, a fluid coupled analysis with structural, uh, then we can do it easily in the Workbench platform. So Workbench platform allows you to connect multiple systems, multiple physics together. Okay, So you can transfer the load from one physics to another physics. So just give an example. So uh, using the Workbench platform, you can do a, a fluid structure interaction, which is also called FSI analysis fluid structure interaction. So using this FSI study, you can solve the, the flow analysis, fluid flow analysis using Fluent or CFX. And after solving the, the flow analysis, you can transfer the fluid pressure as a load to mechanical. Okay, So this pressure will be applied in mechanical as a load. And then when you solve mechanical, you will be able to get the stresses. Okay? So this is an example of a fluid structure interaction study. So with the Workbench platform, you can easily do uh, multi-way, like one-way or two-way connections, couplings. Okay. So Access Mechanical. So Access Mechanical is the flagship FEA tool for structural, thermal, acoustics, and uh, various other multi-physics simulations. 
So the FEA tool of ANSYS is called ANSYS Mechanical, which is the flagship product. Uh, so it is mainly used for strength analysis. Like uh, uh, if you would like to estimate the, the stresses generated in the body or the strains or the deformation due to a particular type of loading, uh, it can be vibration loading or it can be a static loading. So we can take all these types of loadings into the simulation and you can apply these loadings and you can check what is the deformation or the stresses developed so you'll be able to, to look at all the different aspects in terms of st st structural mechanics. Okay. So applications from linear statics to complex transient simulations involving nonlinear materials. So with ANSYS Mechanical, you can do a very basic linear static analysis to highly comp uh, advanced uh, transient dynamic analysis. So we have uh, the best in class GUI. So as I mentioned before, we have the most user friendly GUI, and we have lot we have a lot of built in tools within as uh, mechanical like topology optimization, connections, two way couplings. Okay, so later we'll discuss all these additional tools. So we have the logical analysis routine. So if you take any type of analysis for example let's say today you want to do a static analysis or maybe uh, if you want to do let's say a model analysis to find out the natural frequency modes so we have a predefined workflow so you just have to follow the workflow the workflow is also automatic like i mean uh, the, tr the transfer of data from one one component to the another component will be all automatic you don't have to do any manual uh, there is no need for any manual intervention everything is almost automatic okay so here as i mentioned we have uh, a logical workflow starting with uh, for example this example is for static structural analysis so if you want to do a static structural analysis first you have to define the material properties so to define the material properties you need to go to the engineering data then geometry so you have to have a cad model right so the cad model is under geometry then model so model is basically meshing so to do any finite element analysis you have to mesh the model right so the meshing is under model then so simulation setup is under setup so setting up means you have to define the the loads on the supports then solution is basically solving the analysis and results uh, it's basically so uh, post processing like checking the results like you can plot the contour of stress or strain or deformation. So this is the simulation workflow. Finally, parameters. So parameters helps you to, to run different iterations. For example, uh, let's say you want to run uh, 10 design iterations by changing the load, for example. So using the parameters option here, you'll be able to run multiple design scenarios or loading scenarios. So we, we have a logical uh, workflow starting from material property definition up to uh, post-processing and parameterization. So we also have an automatic uh, report generation tool inside. So this is the GUI. So as I mentioned earlier, we have the most user-friendly uh, GUI here. Uh, so we have a workflow here as well, like a logical workflow, like top-down approach, starting from the geometry, material property, mesh, then analysis settings, then boundary conditions where you can define your loads and supports, then solving, then post-processing, like looking at the results. So all these are integrated within the same platform. So it, it will be easy for the users to to change the, the design or like to, to look at all the different aspects within the single environment itself. Geometry preparation. So uh, we, apart from simulation, we also have CAD modeling, CAD modelers. So the 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 the, the most commonly used ANSYS CAD modeler is called space claim or discovery space claim. So this discovery space claim is a more user friendly CAD modeler. Uh, with this uh, space claim, you can quickly create CAD models. So this CAD model, the, the space claim is based on direct modeling technique. So which means there won't be any history saved. So you, with, uh, with the, the direct modeling technique, you can easily edit the models, CAD models, or you, or you can easily create the CAD models from scratch. Okay. The space claim is basically a CAD modeler. 
and using this you can quickly create CAD models or edit CAD models. So let's say you already have a CAD mod um, model and there are some issues with the CAD model. So with space claim you can also fix the geometry based issues. Then meshing. So um, FEA requires meshing, right? So as I mentioned before, uh, without meshing, we cannot solve the FEA model. So you need to have a proper mesh. So uh, in Workbench, there are two ways to get mesh. One is uh, automatic meshing. So you can let the program decide the optimum element size for your case. So the program will automatically determine the, the optimum, of the op optimum element size when you import the geometry into the GUI. So it is almost automatic. So without any uh, input from the user, the program is able to automatically generate a mesh. Okay. So the meshing is almost automatic. But if you want to take control, like uh, let's say you want to change the size or change the type of elements, or let's say you want to refine one particular surface based on your area of interest. So all these can be also done. So you can take full control of the mesh or you can also let it be automatic. So we have a lot of options to change the element size, shape, the orientation, alignment. So we have a lot of options for that. So strength analysis. So strength analysis basically is used to uh, understand how the structure behaves under different loading conditions. And, uh, and also you, you will be interested in checking the stresses and the deformations okay so this is the main purpose of a strength analysis to check the the strength uh, aspects of the uh, the design okay so with this information if you want to uh, improve the performance you can improve it okay or uh, if you want to um, optimize the model you can optimize it so there are multiple options after you are done with the fea analysis or fea okay. So the strength analysis in ANSYS uh, supports all types of analysis, starting from static linear to advanced nonlinear. Okay. So in, in nonlinear, we have different types of nonlinearities, like uh, material nonlinearity, uh, geometric nonlinearity, and uh, contact nonlinearity. So we support all types of nonlinearities. And also when it comes to material models here, so we support all types of material models. Like for example, if you are working with uh, metals, then we have uh, a lot of material models that helps you to define the behavior of the metal. Or let's say you are working with uh, rubber kind of materials. So basically they are called hyperelastic materials. So you can also define hyperelastic materials. Okay. So that the, the material in simulation will behave like a rubber model. Then we have creep. So creep model is mainly used uh, for time and temperature dependent defects. And stability. So uh, in some cases, we may also need to check the stability of the structure. So stability involves checking whether the structure may undergo any uh, buckling type of loading. So buckling is a common phenomenon in structures. Okay, especially slender uh, bodies. Right. So uh, using the uh, buckling analysis, similar procedure in, uh, in analysis, you'll be able to check what is the buckling safety factor in your uh, model. Durability, and also in many cases, when you design the product, you will also need to look at the reliability aspect. So it is not that the, the component will undergo loading only once, but it will undergo cyclic loading like multiple times. Okay. It can be a few thousand times or it can be a few million times, depending upon what, what product you are designing. Okay. So you want to also, you will need to also estimate the life of the product. Okay. So using the fatigue modules, fatigue tools that we have, you'll be able to estimate the number of cycles of loading the component can take before it Fail. So failing here can be crack initiation. It depends on what you define as failure. So with the fatigue module, we can calculate what is the uh, the life cycle of the component. So we support uh, all types of fatigue calculations, starting from uh, the high cycle fatigue, which is the SN curve based method, and then we have low cycle fatigue, 
uh, which can be uh, calculated using strain life method. ANSYS ENCODE. So ANSYS ENCODE is a special type of fatigue analysis tool. Okay. So it is used for advanced fatigue calculations. Like for example, if you have multi-axial uh, loading conditions, or let's say you are dealing with vibration fatigue analysis, or let's say you are dealing with thermomechanical fatigue. Okay. So for, or, or maybe a weld fatigue. Uh, let's say you have a welding in your analysis structure, and then you want to see uh, how long does the the well joint uh, can uh, can withstand. Okay. So all these types of special fatigue cases can be solved using ANSYS ENCODE. Fracture mechanics and crack growth. So uh, fracture mechanics is also another advanced topic that ANSYS Mechanical can simulate. Like let's say you have a crack and uh, let's say you want to simulate the, the material or the, the, the design with a crack. So with the simulation, you can check You'll be able to check whether the crack will propagate or whether the, 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 the crack will not propagate. So these kind of uh, different aspects can be uh, studied using fracture mechanics. So this is also uh, part of our FEA analysis. And this is a kind of advanced analysis technique where you can define different types of cracks and see whether the crack will propagate or not. Thermal analysis. Uh, so with mechanical, we can also do thermal analysis. Okay. So thermal analysis is basically a heat transfer study where uh, you can apply thermal loads. So instead of structural loads like force, pressure, in a thermal analysis, you'll be able to apply thermal loads. The thermal loads can be energy. For example, uh, let's say you have maybe let's take this example PCB. So the chip will generate heat, right? So this heat. So the heat energy will be in terms of watt, maybe 0 0.05 watt, something, right? So with this watt, you'll be able to find out what is the temperature rise in the PCB. Okay. So this is, a, this is thermal analysis. So you can apply different thermal conditions, temperature conditions, or energy in, input conditions, like heat, heat flow. Heat flux, heat flow is basically uh, in terms of what? Heat flow or heat flux, which is watt per meter square, or heat generation from a volume. So all these types of different, all these different types of heat inputs can be defined in the analysis. And with the help of heat input, the program will be able to simulate what is the amount of, uh, what is the temperature distribution on the assembly. Okay. So the, the, the thermal analysis can be also steady state and transient. Okay. So steady state is basically, uh, St static analysis like constant loading transient meaning time dependent loading so next we have the vibration analysis capabilities so ANSYS is also able to carry out all types of vibration or dynamic analysis okay? and we also have implicit and explicit dynamic analysis capabilities so first we will go through the implicit dynamic analysis capabilities or vibration analysis capabilities and followed by this we will also see explicit dynamics. So the very uh, basic vibration analysis is model analysis. So for model analysis, we have a separate model analysis system. So using the model analysis system or model analysis, you will be able to find out the natural frequency of the structure. Okay. So this is the uh, the output in a model analysis. So the natural the, the, the natural frequencies are the, the fundamental frequencies of the system or the structure. Okay. So this is uh, the most basic dy dynamic analysis. Okay. So uh, so we have this model analysis system which helps you to do a model analysis, and you'll be able to find out the natural frequency modes of the structure that you are dealing with. Okay. And in addition to the natural frequency. You can you'll also see the, you'll be also able to get uh, the mode shifts, the participation factors, and all. 
So this is one of the modes of vibration. So after model analysis, we have harmonic analysis. Okay. So in harmonic analysis, we will be able to apply any sinusoidal type of loading. Okay, sinusoidal load loads in the form of sine curve. Okay, so uh, for example, let's say there is a motor operating on a structure, and uh, if there is any eccentricity in the shaft, it may exert a kind of sinusoidal force. Okay, so this kind of sinusoidal loads can be applied on the structure using a harmonic analysis. The harmonic analysis is in frequency domain, so we'll apply the load in terms of frequency. Let's say ten newtons. For example, so that this 10 newtons will be applied over a range of frequency. So there is a note, there is a need to define the interaction between the bodies. Okay? Co contacts is one of the ways to define the interaction between the bodies in the simulation. Okay, so uh, one of the advantages here is in ANSYS, we have an automatic method to detect the contact regions. So the when you import the CAD model into ANSYS, the program will automatically detect all the contact interfaces and it will create a contact region. So in addition to uh, contacts, we have bolt connections, like if you're dealing with bolts, so you don't even have to model the bolt threads, so we can handle it using the options in our solver itself. So with answers, you can handle a small component to a very large assembly kind of model. Non-linear adaptivity. So non-linear adaptivity is a uh, Again, one of the advanced simulation techniques that allows automatic mesh refinement. So what happens is, uh, if you're dealing with highly nonlinear material scenario, material behavior, then using the nonlinear uh, non adaptivity, the program will automatically refine the mesh during the simulation. So you don't have to stop the analysis and restart it, but the program will do it automatically. So uh, it will automatically identify the regions where the meshes are highly distorted, and then it will automatically refine the mesh and continue with the simulation. Then composites. Composites is another area uh, which also uh, is important for structural engineers. Right? So uh, with ANSYS, uh, we have a dedicated tool called ANSYS Composite Prepost. So this Composite Prepost uh, is an advanced and dedicated tool for composite layer modeling and failure analysis. Okay. So normally when you look at laminated composites, so there'll be a lot of layers. So inside the layers, if you have uh, different uh, fibers, uh, matrix and different orientations of the fiber. So using the, the ANSYS Composite Prepost tool, you can define all these layers so you can define the layer thickness you can define the fiber orientation you can define the property of the fiber and the matrix separately so basically this scp will allow you to define the, the the micro level details of the composite laminate and you can simulate the composites so you can check what happens to the stresses when you define when you use a composite material instead of a traditional material and then, uh, in, in, in addition to the post-processing, pre-processing, we also have different post-processing techniques. So using the post-processing techniques, you can look at uh, the composite-specific failures like buckling of the composites or uh, wrinkling or delamination of the, the laminates. So all these can be also uh, verified, which are very specific to composites can be also verified using the composite pre-post. Uh, pre so this tool is also part of Hans's mechanical. Then we have another tool called ACCS, Hans's Composite Cure Simulation, uh, which simulates the, uh, the manufacturing process, curing manufacturing process of the composite. Material data. First is Hans's Cranta. Uh, sometimes if you are working on simulations, uh, you may find it difficult to get the material properties. So uh, in ANSYS, we have uh, a material database called Granta. Okay. So uh, basically, I'll go to the next slide first. So it's called the, the material database is called Granta Selector. So it is like a huge repository of materials where uh, material properties. 
So you using this Granta selector tool, you can find out the the, the mechanical prop, not only the mechanical properties, all the properties like thermal properties, electrical properties, optical properties, uh, the price of the material, availability of the material, some supplier information. So the complete details of the materials can be found in Granta selector. So it is an add-on tool, but this is mainly used for material uh, selection. And then we have another, another uh, small tool called materials data, uh, Granta materials data for simulation. So this uh, is a set of material property that are available for simulation. Okay. So this is basically a material library, okay. add-on material library. If you want to extend the, uh, the material properties available in the default ANSYS library for simulation. But this Granta selector is not for simulation, it is mainly for material selection. Next is optimization. So we have uh, built-in tools within uh, ANSYS Workbench platform for uh, optimization. So basically we can do two types of optimization. One is parameter-based optimization and the other one is topology optimization. So for the for, for the uh, parameter-based optimization, we have a tool called ANSYS Design Explorer. Okay. So use, using the Design Explorer, you can set various parameters okay, in, in, your, in your model setup, like uh, you, know, you can set the thickness of a body as a parameter, or the load that you're applying can be set as a parameter. So you can set various parameters and then the program uh, within the um, for all these uh, parameters you can define a range of value maybe you can uh, tell the program that you want to vary the thickness from 8 to 10 mm so you define a range okay. similarly you can say uh, you want to change the force from 100 newtons to 150 newtons so you can define a range of values for all the different parameters that you set okay then based on the, the parameters range, the program will do some internal calculations or we, we call it as design of experiments. So it will solve for a few design points and then it will create a mathematical function called response surface. Then with this response surface, you can explore your design space. Like you can change the input parameter uh, using a simple slider and you can check what is the output. Okay. So for example, uh, let's say you want to find out uh, the, uh, the value of stress and the thickness is 8.8 .8 mm. So you don't have to run a simulation, but using the mathematical function, you can set the, the thickness as 8.8 .8, and the program will immediately tell you the stress for 8.8 .8 thickness will be uh, maybe 230 megapascal, for example. So without doing the simulation, you can find out the values of the outputs, so like stresses, deformation. Okay. Similarly, uh, you can also do optimization like uh, so this is basically a goal driven optimization where you can set certain goals so you can say i want the stress to be below 200 megapascal then based on this so you can set goals so based on your criteria the program will recommend the values for example uh, for the same scenario let's say you, you set the the maximum uh, allowable stress value is 200 so based on this the program will tell you in order to have uh, the stress of uh, 200, the thickness must be 4.4 uh, mm, for example. So this will be the recommendation from the program. So this is called uh, optimization. So the program, you can see here, the program is running for various iterations for the number of uh, the, the ribs. So it is increasing the ribs. And then, based on this, you can select which the design is suitable for you. Then, topology optimization. So, topology optimization is uh, basically uh, optimizing the shape of your product. So, here we don't set any parameters, but we optimize the shape. So, uh, what uh, we can do here is you can, uh, let's say, you're designing a component. So you can come out with some uh, rough design for your component. Okay. Then uh, with this uh, rough design, you can do the, the analysis, the stress analysis. Like you can set up your boundary conditions like uh, supports and then you can apply the loads. 
then you can check the stresses. So after obtaining the stresses, you can do a topology optimization. So what it will do is uh, the, the topology optimization solver will recommend you with different types of shapes. So you can see here. So this is the recommended shape. So, so within the op optimization system, you can also set goals. Like you say, you want to reduce the, the mass by maybe 50% or 20%. So uh, you can set your uh, 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 expect uh, the, the, the objective. Then at the same time, you can also add constraints. Okay, let's say you in this design, uh, you don't want to modify a certain feature. Okay? Maybe uh, one particular portion you don't want to modify. You want to maintain the shape. So you can also add uh, exclusions. Okay? So when you exclude a region, then the program will not touch the region during the uh, design iteration. Okay? So it will retain the excluded region. So it will try to optimize the remaining region. So it is very straightforward. After doing the the, sta the static analysis, you just go and uh, go to the topology optimization where you set up your constraints. I mean your objective, like you want to reduce the mass or maintain the stiffness. Uh, so these are the basic uh, constraints, and then you can also add any exclude exclusion re exclu uh, regions that you want to exclude from the optimization. So after defining all this, the program will uh, you know, run. I mean it will solve and it will come out with a shape. So you can see here, this is the recommended shape. So in this recommended shape, uh, you, 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 the, the pro, uh, you would have reduced the mass. So reducing the mass means you are reducing the cost of the component. So this is basically called topology optimization. Okay. So uh, it is not, it doesn't only, it, it doesn't stop here. Okay. So after you get this shape, you have to convert it into a CAD model, right? So in ANSYS, we have an automatic workflow where you can connect the, the topology optimization result with the new static structural geometry. So what this will do is the optimized shape from here, which is, for example, this shape here, will be automatically transferred to a new static analysis. And in the, on the new design, you can apply the loads and you can apply the supports and you can check whether the model is able to take the loads or not. Okay. So this is how you can verify the structure after optimizing it. So uh, the workflow is like this. So we start with a rough design of the component. Then we will do a static structural analysis on the rough design. And then we get the stresses. And based on the static analysis results, we will do optimization. So. Uh, uh, after running the optimization, you will get the shape, new shape. So this new shape needs to be verified, right? So you have to take this new shape to another static structural analysis, then apply the constraints, and then apply the loadings, and then check whether the new new design is able to perform as per the requirement and the safety considerations. So this is the, uh, the workflow for topology optimization. And this whole process is seamless and automatic. So you can see all these are just connecting the systems. Okay. By just connecting, you can transfer the data or the CAD model from one system to another system. Okay. So there's no manual intervention in it. Everything is automatic. Okay. So additive manufacturing. So additive manufacturing is also uh, an important area now uh, where uh, many um, you companies are looking into additive manufacturing for manufacturing the components, especially complicated shapes, or where you want to reduce the number of parts in the assembly uh, or customization. So all these things, additive manufacturing. Okay. Uh, so there are also some uh, you know, uh, risks and limitations with additive manufacturing. So uh, one of the issues that's common in additive manufacturing is the build failure. So build failure meaning uh, when you print the part, especially metal, uh, after printing, you may see some crack formation or deformation of the shape, deformation of the part. So instead of your required design, you will get a slightly deformed part after printing. 
Okay, so these are the common issues that people face during uh, additive manufacturing. Okay. So in ANSYS, we have a simulation-based solution. Uh, so this simulation-based solution allows you to check whether the particular part that you have can be printed or not. And it will also tell you uh, what will be the deformations if you print this particular shape or what will be the distortions or warpage when you print a particular shape. Okay, So this is the purpose of additive manufacturing simulation solution. Okay, So this solution that we have is mainly focusing on uh, metal-based printing. So it is not for plastic printing because in plastic printing, the cost of failure is not that high. Whereas uh, when you look at metal printing, the cost of failure is, is very high. <laughs> so uh, this simulation solution is mainly uh, uh, focusing on additive printing based on uh, metals, mainly portable fusion technology printing and DED technology, direct energy deposition technology. So uh, using this, if, if, if you are printing any metal parts using these two technologies, you can use ANSYS simulation to check whether the part that you have can be printed without any build issues. Okay, So this is the, the important aspect. So we have a lot of uh, pre-processing tools for additive print because in uh, additive printing uh, or additive manufacturing, support generation is also one of the important tasks. So we have an additive prep module which helps you to prepare your model for printing like uh, now you can convert to STL and fix issues with your STL models, pre prepare the support, part nesting, and set the right orientations. So all this can be done using additive prep. Then we have print simulations. So using the print simulation software uh, solution, you can take the part, you can define the printing parameters. So the machine parameters basically, like you can set what is the laser speed, and then what is the layer thickness, uh, hatch spacing, so all the real-time printing parameters or the machine parameters can be set in the simulation and you can run the simulation and you can check what will be the stresses during printing or after print, not during printing, after printing. So what will be the distortions or whether the support will fade or not. So all these different aspects can be simulated. Then we have uh, a tool called ANSYS Discovery. So this tool is mainly used for uh, designers who don't do any detailed design, but those who want to do some quick simulation. So ANSYS Discovery, also called Discovery Live, is an easy, fast, and powerful simulation for designers. So this is a real-time simulation, uh, which is embedded uh, in our CAD tool. So using the real-time simulation, you can see what happens to the, the results, like the stresses deformation when you modify the part. So it, it is a instantaneous simulation. Okay. So this discovery simulation is available for basic structural analysis, basic fluid flow analysis, and thermal analysis. Okay. So this is uh, totally different from our flagship solvers. Discovery is mainly for, uh, for those who want to run multiple design iterations within a short period of time. Because this is, a, this is an instantaneous simulation. So you can see in the video here, so for the fluid flow, they are changing the, the diameter of the pipe and immediately the results are changing. Okay. So this is how fast the discovery life is. Okay. So just by modifying the geometry, you can check how the simulation results will change. Okay. It's a live, uh, live simulation. It's a real-time simulation. So this is mainly used for uh, some uh, preliminary studies. It's not for a very detailed uh, product design and simulation, but it is for, it's mainly used to the, the beginning stage. Okay. When you have hundreds of uh, design ideas in mind, then you can use discovery to narrow down the ideas. Okay. Or streamline it. So it is an interactive uh, you know, GUI where you can directly change the geometry and you can get the results. Same for structural analysis as well. You can change the increase. For example, you can increase the thickness and you can see what happens to the stress when you increase the thickness immediately. Everything is instantaneous. Within a few seconds, you will be able to get the results. Okay. So 
I think this should be all about patches mechanical. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, you can type in the chat. I will be able to answer it. Do you have any question? Uh, Dr. Charlton, do you have any question for Hardy? Yeah. Uh, yes. No, no, I'll do a demo so they can understand. Okay. Okay, no, no problem. No problem. Okay, let me do a demo so that uh, you can visually see what happens. What is the what is FEA and what kind of results you can get? Okay, no problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So this is the. I believe you can see my screen, Catherine. You can see my screen, right? Uh, yes, Harry. I can see your screen. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is the, the Workbench platform that I was mentioning before. So Workbench is the simulation platform of ANSYS. Okay. So in the Workbench platform, uh, on the left-hand side, we have a lot of analysis systems. Okay. So these analysis systems are uh, designed for uh, a particular type of analysis. First, uh, for example, let's say we want to do a, uh, an FEA, strength analysis. And then for the strength analysis, we have static structure. So you can click, drag, and drop it over here. So this static structural will come out with the full template of uh, the full template that you will need to follow. Okay. So first step here is the engineering data. So engineering data is the place where we define the material properties. So uh, since you all are mechanical engineers, so you know uh, the mechanical properties, right? So basically, to define the strength of the material, we need a uh, few parameters. So the most important parameter here is Young's modulus. So when you go into the engineering data, so you can create your own materials. Okay? So we also have a set of library where you can directly use it. For example, so we have structural steel. So for the structural steel, we already have the material properties defined. Young's modulus is 2. E11 Pascal, Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3. So we need these two properties to, to identify the stresses generated in the material. So these two are the, the most basic properties that are needed to get the stresses. Okay. So you can also create your own material. Okay. Uh, and you have to define using the isotropic elasticity on the left hand side just click drag and drop it over here then you can define the properties okay. 1.6 11 for example and you have to define the Poisson's ratio okay. you have to define the x modulus and the Poisson's ratio okay. so these two are the, the 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 basic properties needed to run uh, the stress analysis. So without Young's modulus, we cannot calculate stresses. So we have to define Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So these are the material properties, which are basically user input. So after the engineering data, we have to have a CAD model. Okay. So if you already have a CAD model, which uh, you have uh, created in other CAD tools, you can just right click and import the CAD models. If not, you can also create CAD models from scratch. Okay. So I'm using ANSYS space claim, which is ANSYS uh, own CAD tool to prepare a CAD model. Just wait for a minute for space time to load.
So this is the space claim platform. So I'm going to create a simple CAD model here. Just a block. So space claim is a very user friendly tool. So you can easily you know, uh, edit models. So let's say you want to increase the, the length. You can just click and drag. It's very simple. So very simple to edit models. So let's say you want to create a hole here. It's also very simple. So you can easily create a hole like this. Okay. So using space climb is it's very user friendly to, to build models. So now I have a 3D CAD model. This is a CAD model. I believe you all know CAD model, right? 3D CAD. Next, I'm going to the simulation. Okay, so this is the, the ANSYS mechanical UI. Uh, so this is very user friendly and interactive. So you can zoom in, you can rotate the model, you can select the different entities. Okay. So here on the left hand side, we have the project outline. So where when you expand the geometry, you can see the, the bodies that, that are created in the CAT. So in this uh, model, I have only one body. So you have only one. So if there are multiple bodies, everything will be listed under the geometry okay. and you can see the material so the material that is assigned by default is structural steel but if you want to assign uh, then maybe the, the newly created material which is test then just click on test so the material will be applied okay then meshing so meshing as i mentioned before it's automatic it's almost automatic so you can just right click on the mesh and choose generate mesh the program will automatically create a mesh. So you can see here, the mesh has been created automatically. I did not do any setting. Okay. But if you want to, let's say, refine the mesh, or if you want to define your own element size, then you can also define it over here. Okay. So as I say, I changed the unit time. I put um, 2 mm. element size. Then right click generate mesh then you'll get a defined mesh so you can see this is 2 mm element size so this is how the program will uh, you can control the mesh so you can let the program decide the shape uh, the size or you can change it after uh, you generate the mesh you can see a tick mark okay now under the static structural we have to define the loads we have to define the uh, boundary conditions. So boundary conditions includes loads and supports. So when you right click on the static structural insert, you can see a lot of loads and supports. So first I'll define a sub, which is a fixed support. So when you define the fixed support, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, the, the nodes will be generated during machines. Okay, this, okay, let this, uh, let me highlight the nodes.
Okay. Correct. Right. Oh, okay. So in answers, uh, in the in the new versions of answers, the program uh, program is automatically selecting the uh, the element type. Okay. But if you like to do it manually, you can. So you just have to uh, type the the element number using the command. And then the program will automatically use the material, the, the element type that you specify. Okay. If not, the program, based on your analysis type, loading type, the program will automatically select. So it is intelligent enough to automatically select the element type in the new. Yes, yes, no, or rubber. So because rubber is hyper elastic, so that it will automatically change the type of element. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's more user now. Okay, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So now we are applying uh, a support. So first, uh, you have to specify the location where you want to apply the support. So I'm choosing this surface. Okay. So I'm applying the fix support on this surface. Now I have a su support, and and I also need to apply a load because without load, there won't be any deformation or stresses. Right. So I have to apply a load. So I click on the static structural insert force. So I'm applying force load. Force. I'm applying the force on this surface. Okay. Then I have to define the magnitude of the force and the direction of the force. Okay. So because force is a vector quantity, so you have to define the magnitude and also the direction. So instead of uh, using defining using the, the magnitude and direction i'm choosing something called components so when you change to components it will be very straightforward you can define the x component of the force y component of the force and z component of the force so i uh, say i want to apply a vertical load in the vertical downwards maybe so i put minus 100 so you can see an arrow mark here acting downwards and the magnitude is minus 100 newtons. So this is the force of minus 100 newtons acting downwards. Okay. So we have applied a support and we have a force. Okay. Then we have a mesh. So without a mesh, we cannot solve FEA. Mesh is important. Now, uh, it, uh, we can solve the analysis. Before solving, let me also request for some results. So I'm going to insert maybe deformation so i want to see what is the total deflection of the material now i can solve the analysis so right click on the solution solve okay so the solution has been solved and you can see the deflection deflection is 0 0.06 mm okay, so this is the deflection now, uh, let's say you also want to see the stresses. Okay. So you can insert one more result, solution, insert. So we, you can see here we have a lot of results, deformation, strain, stress, uh, contact results, uh, uh, reaction force. Okay. So let me insert stress. So if you go, to into, go into stress, we have a lot of different stresses. Von Mises stress, principal stresses, normal stresses, shear stresses. So let's insert on my stress. Okay, so the stress generated on this component is 42.3 megapascal. Okay, so this is how you can run a uh, FEA to check the strength aspects. So the stress generated is 40, 42. So based on the stress, and let's say you know the, the yield strength of the material, then you can calculate the safety factor. Okay, so then you can. Uh, Verify whether the safety factor is uh, enough or not. If it is not within your required safety range, then you need to modify the design, something like that. So this is how you can use uh, ANSYS FEA in your product design to check the, 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 the strength aspects, basically stresses and deformations. You can see the difference. Yeah. Force. Yeah. Oh, this is particularly uh, downwards the bending loop.
Yep. Oh, okay. So the okay, okay. No, no problem. So in when you run FEA, so you will not get a single result. Normally, when you do calculations, you'll get only one number as a result. But in reality, the stresses is you the stress will not be constant or throughout the model. So it will be a changing stress. So that is the the, the advantage of using numerical methods. Okay. So uh, for the results, we have something called probe. Okay, so I'll just use this probe to explain this. So the, the result, okay, so when you click on this element, this portion, the stress is 28 megapascal, whereas this portion, it is 26, and here it is 19. And near the hole, it's uh, very, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite high, 24. I think you believe, I believe you all know stress concentration effects, right? stress intensity factors. Then when you go down here, the stress is very low, one, one, uh, one megapascal. So this color is a contour plot because the stress is not a constant value. It is a distributed value. Okay. So the maximum is 42 and the minimum is 0.46 in the entire model. So whenever you uh, we, we design, we will use the maximum value because maximum portion, maximum value is the point where the stress is very high and which is uh, probably, I mean, if the part fails, probably it will fail at the maximum stress location, right? So this is our, usually our, we will be uh, checking at the maximum stress region. Okay. Uh, uh, right, basically, it's low on certain points. Near, yeah, yellow is near. Clear the blue. Yes, correct, correct. So I believe this is similar. To, uh, I believe you have studied the cantilever uh, bending. Right? So the lower portion will undergo compression and the top will be under tension. And this is the neutral fiber where the stress is almost zero or neutral fiber. Right? So it's the same example, cantilever. Okay. So similarly for the deformation. So deformation, uh, so you you can also like think logically here. So that when you apply the load and the the support is here and the load is applied here. So this portion will undergo large deflection, the maximum deflection, maximum deflection. Whereas this portion is fixed, so it's zero supported. So that's why the stresses are maximum at the support. The stresses are minimum at the free end because the the free end will not have any stress because it's free to bend. Yeah, so this is the, the structural mechanics principles. Well, we can, can, can we can just take the same model here. So uh, I'll just connect. Okay, we have a model analysis system. So in answers, you can easily connect the systems. Now I, uh, let me go to model analysis. So model analysis is basically to check the natural frequencies. So again, the same principle, we have uh, the materials defined under the geometry in mesh, I click generate mesh. So I create the default mesh. Then in a model analysis, you don't have to apply any loads. You just have to define the supports. Okay, so I'll define the fixed support. Right click, insert, fixed support. So you can see there are no loads, only supports. Okay, fixed support. I apply the fixed support on this surface. Now, you uh, you you need to also specify how many modes you want to find. So let's say six modes. The first six modes. Right click. And so it's very simple. Model analysis is very simple. <laughs> okay. So here in the table, you can see there are six natural frequencies found. So the first frequency is 1827 hertz, then 2794, uh, then 10,357 and 377. So these are all the different natural frequency modes, the first six natural frequency modes. Okay. So if you want to look at the 
shapes then you can also get it mode shape results so this is the first natural frequency which is 1827 hertz and this is the second frequency Then this is the, the this is like a testing mode. Then we have the fourth natural frequency. Then we have the fifth natural frequency, which is this. Then the sixth is a tension mode, the tensile direction. So we managed to extract up to six. So if you want 10 modes, then you can just put 10 here and the program will extract the first 10 frequency modes. Okay. So this is the modal analysis. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, okay. So, in 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 mechanical design, uh, in certain applications, uh, we would like to have uh, make use of the natural frequency vibrations, and in most places, we try to avoid the natural frequency based vibrations. Okay. For example, uh, say you are dealing with uh, a ship design, uh, not not a ship, maybe a bridge design okay so uh, when you are designing a bridge uh, normally people will look at all the different natural frequency modes to make sure uh, that no wind load will excite any of the natural frequency modes because when let's say there is a wind load at the same frequency range and it may lead to resonance so when during resonance the amplitude of vibrations will be very high and it can fail the structure okay so in some scenarios we try to avoid the natural frequency for example, let's say this is a structure. Then let's say you have a motor rotating on this structure at a particular frequency. Okay. And uh, again, assume that the motor is exerting a force. Since the motor is rot rotating, it will apply an alternative force, right? like a sinusoidal loading, which has a frequency. So when the frequency of the motor matches with the natural frequency of the structure, then at that particular instant, you may see the amplitude of vibrations to be very high. Okay? So this is an undesirable scenario because the noise will be higher. Okay? So amplitude yeah, will be higher and the noise will be also higher. Right? So people will try to avoid these scenarios. So what they will do is they will try to uh, make sure they will make sure that the natural frequency is not overlapping with the operating frequency of the machineries. So this will prevent uh, the amplitude of vibrations to be this will make sure you know, there is there is no like lot of amplitude I mean high amplitude vibrations in the system. So this is uh, one scenario. But in some scenarios, like for example, if you are working at, at uh, ultrasonic transducers, okay, so that people will tend to have more amplitude vibrations because ultrasonic machining is making use of resonance. So especially the this kind of tensile mode. Okay, so you, you can I just put it like this. So the ultrasonic transducer, transducer will be acting in this in the in the in the length direction. So it will be moving up and down. So in this scenario, we we will like to use we will apply the loading in this range so that we can excite the this particular natural frequency in our design. Okay. So in 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 a transducer kind of scenario, people will try to apply the load in this in the in the range in the last mode range, which is for example, 19,800 okay, for this particular material. So when you ex when you uh, excite this mode, then it will, since it already has a natural frequency here in this range, uh, you'll get more amplitude vibrations, which is a desirable phenomenon in, in this particular application. 
So in certain applications, we need to we will make use of the natural frequency vibration, and in most scenarios, we try to avoid the natural frequency based vibrations. Okay, so depending upon what type of application we are looking at. Okay, so this is the the so that's why model analysis is the fundamental where uh, you can at least understand what are all the different modes, different mode shapes, and the directions and all. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, for uh, okay, for rotating machineries, for example, so, okay. Normally, this is not a shaft. So, this is basically this is not a rotating thing, right? So, if you have a torque. Then again, torque also has a you no know, torch. Uh, torque load also has a magnitude based on the RPM. So we try to you know avoid if you if the comment is not rotating. Okay, so we try to avoid this. But for rotating machineries like rot, uh, shafts or bearings, so we, we have a separate uh, set of analysis called roto dynamics. Okay, so the roto dynamics analysis will uh, help you to check whether uh, uh, you might have come across Campbell diagram. Uh, the the critical speed. Okay, so those kind of aspects can be studied using roto dynamics. That's mainly for rotating machinery, uh, rotating uh, components like shafts and bearings. But for a structural type, yes, again, this is like especially when you have a torque kind of loading, then we try to avoid this kind of frequency. So to prevent the Yeah, 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 yeah. For that, you need to avoid. Avoid. Yeah, correct. So the especially for for this part, uh, particular scenario, it's uh, the third, the third, the third, the third mode which we need to avoid. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Sorry. All right. Okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, anyone has question now? Hello. Mm -mm, yes. Mm, yes, correct. Yes, Bob. Yes. Right, new, yeah, I understand. It's okay. Yes.
Yes. Yep. Or if nahihiya man, sir, <laughs> eh, pwede nyo i-chat dito sa chat box. Yeah. Tapos babasahin ko na lang for Harry. And then I drop my email address, my mobile here. If you have any question in future, you can just message me anytime. Yep, check in the last chat box. Top of that pot. Yeah. Yeah. Kung wala kayong WhatsApp, Viber, or Telegram, pwede, nyo kong, pwede kayong mag-connect sa akin sa Facebook uh, and then Messenger para mas madali. Mm. Yes, yes. Yes po. Email address. Yeah, I have their uh, email address. Maybe I can drop them an email with the link for the feedback. Then after submission of the feedback, you can get the certification. Okay. Apo. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's still here, uh, Dr. Charlton. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I believe, uh, uh, this session has been useful to you all. So uh, normally for this, uh, the, the, this FEA can be used even in your final year projects or whatever design study you are undertaking. So uh, whenever you make, you, you try to design a new component, so it can be based on metals or plastics or any type, uh, you can use simulation to check whether the design is performing as per your expectation. So this will be, this tool can be uh, used in your final year projects or in, in your internships, wherever you design a component, you can make use of ANSYS simulation tools. Okay. So you, uh, when you get a chance, you can try the tool and then if you have any questions or let's say you want to discuss whether this particular tool can be used in your research or in, in any uh, areas, uh, you can discuss with us and yeah, I think you can contact Catherine and she will be able to help you with it. Okay. Yes. Anyways, thanks for joining guys. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Professor. Yeah.